Good evening, everyone. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, good evening. So we are in another session. We are going to continue with this uh, week number two, and we are going to continue with the topics that we were developing yesterday. And we were uh, talking about adjectives. That was uh, the last topic that we were developing yesterday. So now we are going to continue with that topic. We are going to end all the information that we are going to learn about the adjectives, then we are going to do an exercise in which you are going to express your ideas about the different houses that we are going to have in images. So we are going to end the information that we have about the adjectives and the categories that we were talking about yesterday. Also, we are going to have a vocabulary about adjectives. And then I will send to you the images of the houses. And you are going to have time to describe all the houses that you have. But in that case, you're going to choose a, one of these houses and you are going to um, give an explanation about the things that you see in that house and you can add all the information that you want about that place. So now we are going to begin in and we are going to learn, uh, read, I mean, we are going to read um, the things that we were uh, seeing yesterday to remember the things that we were learning. So we are going to begin uh, with this uh, class and yesterday we were talking about the adjectives and we were saying what is an adjective and also we have some categories for this. So here we have the information that we were reading yesterday and we have the question, what is an adjective? And it says that an adjective is a word that modifies a noun or pronoun to make the sentence clearer and more specific. Adjectives answer the following question. What kind, how many, which one? And also we have the usage for these adjectives. And we have, if an adjective is placed after the noun or pronoun, it modifies, it follows the form to be. Then we have adjectives can also follow sense or appearance. Uh, such as look, taste, smell, feel, and sound. And we were talking about the, uh, the things that we can feel. And sometimes it is not like we are going to see something. It's uh, that we are feeling something, uh, maybe music, uh, maybe food, um, maybe a smell or something like that. And we can describe all the information that we are receiving through our body uh, using the adjectives. Then we have adjectives can also uh, be placed before the noun they modify. We are talking about the position of the, um, the adjective. Now we are going to end with that part in which we were uh, learning some things about the adjectives. Then we are going to have the vocabulary. So we are going to have the compound adjectives. We are going to learn what are the compound adjectives. So we have compound adjectives and it says that a compound adjective is formed when two words are used as one expression to modify the same noun. A hyphen is placed between the two words when they precede the noun being modified. In this case, we are going to have two words that function as one. Um, and we are going to uh, separate the word in, in the meaning, it function as one. Para estos compound adjectives, vamos a usar dos eh, palabras, dos adjetivos, eh, separados por un guión, 
que va a servir, ¿verdad? Para modificar un solo nombre. Son dos eh, juntos que al final tienen un solo significado. So, it says... A compound adjective is formed when two words The hyphen is placed between the two words when they proceed to now being modified. So we have the example. And it says, her friend is a well-known author. So in this case, we have uh, these um, compound adjectives. And this is a very clear example of this kind of words because we have two words in one expression and it is modifying the noun. But in that case, the, um, those two words as, are, are functioning as one. So well known is como bien conocido. So amigos es un autor muy conocido o bien conocido. So that kind of words that are in uh, that, um, kind of structures are known as a compound adjectives. So in this case, the a compound adjective is modifying the word author. So the subject of this sentence is the author, no her friend, just the word author. Then in most cases, a hyphen is not used between the two words when they follow the noun being modified. We can add the hyphen um, in the middle of the expression, but in some cases it is not necessary. And they follow the noun being modified. So we have the example and it says, her friend is well known as an author. So in this case, uh, the word author is not the subject. In this case, it's her friend. Because in that case, we are saying that that person is well known as an author. In ese caso, no vamos a utilizar el, um, el guión porque ya estamos modificando lo que es la palabra amigo. So in that case, her friend is well known as an author. Es muy conocido como autor. So then we have series of adjective. In this case, we are going to talk about um, when we have um, two or more adjectives in the same sentence. What are we going to do with um, two or three adjectives when we are using a sentence? So now we are going to find the structure for that kind of expressions in which we are going to use a lot of adjectives to describe something. So we have the series 
of adjectives. Series de adjetivos. ¿Cómo vamos a colocar los adjetivos cuando tenemos varios? Ya sea uno, dos, tres, cuatro, o cuántos adjetivos vayamos a colocar. Que no es muy común que pongamos más de, de tres, I think. But we are going to see. So, a series of adjectives is formed when you are using two or more adjectives to describe the same noun or pronoun. When you are using two or more the same noun or pronoun. And it says a series of adjectives requires commas. So in this case, we're saying that um, when we are using two or more adjectives, we need to separate them using commas. changing the meaning of the sentence. So we have the example. So we are going to see this one and it says, the big, that's one adjective, comma, you see, that's another uh, adjective, comma, delicious, and we have the noun, hamburger was on the grill. And it says the adjective be juicy and delicious, a series of adjectives is modifying the word hamburger. So we have three adjectives here. And we have our noun here. Like that. That is a, a series of adjectives and they are separated by commas. Entonces, cuando tenemos estas series de adjetivos, de dos o más adjetivos, lo vamos a separar por comas eh, para poder modificar, ¿verdad? Nuestro nombre. Nosotros podemos utilizar muchos adjetivos para describir un solo nombre, así como en el ejemplo. Grande, jugosa y deliciosa, hamburguesa. So, then we have the same uh, sentence, but changing some adjectives. I mean, changing the uh, order of the adjectives. So we can write the juicy, delicious, big hamburger, was on the grill. So we are just changing the order. And it says, rearranging the order of adjectives in this um, series does not change the meaning of the sentence. So commas I require. In that case, it's not like we are going to change all of the things that we have in the, in the sentence. So we are just uh, changing the order of the words and it is not a big deal. So we are just going to separate by commas. So we are going to see that if the order of adjectives in a series cannot be rearranged, then no commas are needed. Then we are going to change um, the order, but in this case, in this case, we are not going to use commas. No vamos a utilizar commas en estos otros ejemplos.
So we are going to see the example. And it says here five, because remember that the numbers are also adjectives. Here five large CMEs. So in this case, I need to write this with capital letter. Cats were mewing. So in this case, uh, we are talking about the cats. We are giving um, uh, more information about the cats, but in this case, we are not going to use the commas. And we are going to change the order of the words. So it says, here large, five cats were mewing. So in the first one, it says that, um, the sentence does not make any sense if we change the words like in the second one. Um, so in this case, it is not necessary to add the commas because we have just one um, order for that word. So, so if we change five large CMEs to large CMEs by cats, it, don't, it doesn't make any sense. So it is not necessary to change the order of the adjective. Si no vamos a cambiar, si no podemos cambiar el orden de los adjetivos, poner un adjetivo antes, otro después, otro en medio, eh, no es necesario poner las comas porque no va a tener ningún sentido la oración. Pero si nosotros tenemos tres adjetivos que separados funcionan bien, sí vamos a poner las comas. Pero si en este caso eh, utilizamos esos adjetivos que juntos sí funcionan bien, pero separados no hay sentido, pues, no vamos a necesitar las comas. Then we have proper adjectives. And it said that proper adjectives are formed from proper nouns. So in this case, we have this kind of uh, adjectives in which we have these ones from a uh, proper nouns. And in that case, uh, remember that if we have proper nouns, we need to write them uh, with capital letter. Así que si tenemos este tipo de adjetivos que derivan de un nombre propio, siempre lo vamos a escribir con mayúscula. So we have the example, the French woman was getting on the plane. So in that case, we need to capitalize French. That is our adjective, but in that, that case is uh, based on a proper noun. And it is modifying the word woman. Then we have the church on the corner. The church on the corner is Episcopalian. Episcopalian. So the adjective Episcopalian, it modifies the word church. So in that case, we are going to write it with capital letter. So we have here the example and also we have here the other one. So then we are almost done with the information. So. We just have comparative adjectives and superlative. Just to type more. Solo tenemos dos tipos más to finish the information of the adjectives. So we have the comparative.
And it says that comparative adjectives are used to show the difference between two nouns or pronouns by stating that one has more of something than the other. These adjectives are usually formed by adding ER and are followed by the word then to show comparison. Estos son los comparativos, ¿verdad? Cuando comparamos una cosa con otra y siempre va, eh, lleva ER al final y va acompañado de la palabra then para mostrar, ¿verdad? Lo que es la comparación. Difference between two nouns or pronouns is stating These adjectives are usually formed by adding, and we have here the things that we are going to add to the word. Adding ER, these ones, ER and R follow. by the word then. To show comparison. And we have one example. The frame about is smaller than, in this case, we're using the adjective small. I'm adding another words here. It's smaller than the picture we took. So in this case, it's uh, saying that the frame that they uh, the mouth is, is smaller. Is, um, en este caso está hablando, ¿verdad? Haciendo una comparación de dos cosas. The frame, que es el cuadro eh, en el que van a colocar la fotografía, y el otro es la fotografía. Así que dice que el cuadro o el... Donde van a poner su fotografía es más pequeño que la, que la fotografía que tomaron. So in that case, we are making a comparison between two things. So in that case, we are going to add ER at the end of the adjective. And then we are going to use then because they are together. So the comparative adjective is smaller is showing the difference between the frame and the picture. And then we have the um, other kind of comparative adjective. And it says that some comparative adjectives are formed by adding the word more or less. We can also use more or less in form of the adjective and are followed by the word then to show comparison. These rules apply to adjectives that are two syllable or more and do not end in Y. So in that case, when we have these long words that function as adjective, we are not just going to add ER at the end of the, sent the, the word. In that case, we are going to use more or we are going to use less. 
when they are to sea level. And it, we have the example. So we have this year chemistry exam was more difficult than last year. This year, chemistry exam was, and in this case, we're going to use more, more difficult than last year. So in this case, we are not going, uh, we are not going to modify the adjective because in that case, we are going to use more or less. En este tipo de eh, adjetivos que son de dos sílabas o más, vamos a utilizar la palabra más o menos y no vamos a modificar el adjetivo en sí, sino que con la palabra más o menos nos va a ayudar ya a modificar lo que es nuestro adjetivo. En eh, solo funciona para los eh, adjetivos que son de dos sílabas o más, o sea que son más largas. And we have the adjective here, difficult. We have here the word that is modifying difficult. And we have then that is always uh, next to the adjective. So we have here three words. Then we have the last type of adjectives that are the superlative ones. Superlative adjectives. And it said that the superlative adjectives are used to show the difference between three or more nouns or pronouns by stating that one has the must of or least of certain quality. These adjectives are usually formed by adding EST and are preceded by the word the as there can only be one superlative. In this case, we have two or more uh, nouns. And in this case, we're showing that one of these nouns are the one that has mm, the most of it or less. In este caso, para los superlativos, cuando tenemos dos o tres o más eh, nombres y queremos demostrar que uno de ellos es el que tiene más y el, o uno es el que tiene lo menos y que nadie le puede ganar in this sentido. They stating that one has the must or at least of a certain quality. These adjectives are usually form by adding EST. So in this case, we are going to use these ones to the end of some of these words, EST. And our proceed by the word the As there can only be one superlative.
So we have the example. And we have, she is the tallest girl in her grade. So in this case, it's, it's saying that no one is taller than this girl. So the superlative adjective tallest shows that she is taller than all of the other girls in her grade. So we have the adjective tallest, that is, she were tall. So it is modified. And it says that uh, some superlative adjectives are, are formed by adding the word most or least in front of the adjective and are preceded by the word the. This rule applies to adjectives that are two syllable or more and do not end in Y. So again, with this kind of adjectives that are two or more syllables, long words, we are going to use in the first one, we use more or, le or, or less, but in this case, we are going to use most or least. Vamos a utilizar most or least para los adjetivos que son de dos sílabas o más, que son palabras largas. So we have the example. And it says the novel we wear sign. Is the most interesting? Is the most interesting one I've read in a while. So that's the example. So remember, just like um, a review, a short review. Because we are going to continue with the list, the vocabulary that we are going to use to talk about the houses. Um, we have different kind of adjectives. Tenemos diferentes tipos de adjetivos que podemos utilizar para describir ¿verdad? las cosas, eh, las personas, en este caso nombres o pronombres, que se refieren a personas. Tenemos eh, los superlativos, tenemos los comparativos. Um, tenemos eh, los adjetivos eh, salidos de nombres propios, eh, tenemos series de adjetivos, eh, también tenemos adjetivos compuestos y los usos de estos adjetivos. So, um, we can say that um, we have a lot of adjectives. You know that we have a lot of, a lot of adjectives um, because Many words, many, many words are used as um, adjectives because we have colors, we have numbers, uh, we have shape, we have um, the things that we can uh, feel with uh, the body. Um, we can have a lot of words that can describe uh, some things. But in this case, I have a list of adjectives for houses or words that we can use to describe a house. But in this case, remember, we have a lot of words that we can use. And this list is just to add more words to our vocabulary. So I will write the list in English and in Spanish. Maybe you know many of these words, but uh, we are just going to have this kind of uh, uh, adjectives in our vocabulary. So. First, I will write the uh, the list. Then I will send to the group of WhatsApp the photos of different houses. And you will choose one of these houses and you are going to describe that house using maybe these adjectives or using another adjectives that you want to use. Because this is not just the list that you are going to use. There are a lot of words that you can use to describe that thing. So we are going to have a list of adjectives for house. 
So we are going to start with the word beautiful. That is very common. That in Spanish means bonito o bonita. Pero como estamos hablando de casas, we are going to say bonita. Number two, comfortable. Comfortable in means cómoda. Then we have cozy. That means acogedor. Or elegant. Elegante. Number five, fine. <laughs> fine, that means fino. Number six, furnished. That in Spanish mean amueblado. Number seven, huge. Enorme. O muy grande. Then isolated. That means aislado. Number nine, luxurious. That means lujoso. Ten, magnificent. Magnificent. That means magnifico. Then we have mention that in Spanish is mansion. Then we have mer blues. That means maravilloso. Modern, moderno. Perfect, perfecto. Posh, that means elegante. Refine. Refinado. Residence. Residencia, I mean, this case is with an S. Then we have a spacious. Espacioso. Stately. Majestuoso. Sublime. That in Spanish is sublime. It's almost the same. Then we have terrific. That in Spanish means estupendo. Or it means Barbaro. Then we have Villa or Villa. Villa. Wonderful. That means, again, maravilloso. We can use uh, some words with the same meaning, but we can use uh, like different words to express maybe some uh, same opinion, but we need to 
give that a, we need to change something in the things we are saying. Then we have a beam. That means espacioso y aireado. Bright. That means brillante. Cheerful. Alegre. Brown down. That means maltrecho. Front. That means estrecho. Dirty. Dirty. Sucio. Dingy. Sombrío. Dark. Oscuro. Gumi. Lugubre. Red. That means abarrotado. Then we have disorganized. Es desordenado. Chaotic. Caótico. Messi. In this case, it's desordenado again. But in some cases, disorganized is something that is not like all the time because maybe disorganized is a um, Telling that we um, change things of the same place that we have, but then we are going to organize the things. But in Messi, it is something that is uh, disordenado, but it's something that it's every time or every day, and we cannot like organize all the things that we have, and we have a messy space. Then we have boring, aburrido, claustrophobic. That means claustrophobico. Constraining. This limitante, uh, uh, talking about the space. Depressing, deprimente, disheartening, That means descorazonador. Dream, macabro. Servo, miserable. And we are almost done. We have just 10 more. Breathtaking. Impresionante. But in this case, it's something that is really, really, really amazing that we don't have words to express the feelings that we are in, feel in that moment when we see something like very amazing or something like that. Enchanting.
encantador. Sit. Exquisito. Fascinating. Fascinante. Gorgeous. Magnífico. Lovely. We have different uh, meanings. Bonito. Estupendo. Muy agradable. Stunning. Descampanante. And we have tremendous. That means tremendo. And the last one, wonderful. Maravilloso. So we have um, some words that we can use to describe houses. But how do I describe a house? How can we do to describe a house? And we can uh, say an example like this. A house is a building that provides shelter and protection from the weather. It is uh, typical made of bricks, wood, or a stone, and it has a roof, windows, and doors. A house may also have a yard, garage, or other outbuildings. So in that case, we are giving an a general description of the house because we are saying that the house has a roof, windows, and doors. And also we are saying the materials that we can use to create that houses. And we are saying that we can use bricks, wood, or stone. Bricks, que son los ladrillos, wood, madera, stone, piedras. Then, uh, what is a fancy name for a house? It says that a house is also called a home. Residence or dwelling, it is the place where we live and it's very important for us. It should be comfortable and cozy. How do you describe a cozy house? That is the first word, I mean, it is not the first word we have in here. We are not have in here. We have here this one. Acogedora. ¿Cómo, cómo describimos una casa acogedora? And it says a uh, cozy house is a small, comfortable, and warm house. Dice que una casa acogedora es pequeña, cómoda, y tibia o calientita. It is usually clean and tidy. Está ordenada y limpia. Uh, with a fireplace, in this case, we don't have a fireplace because we don't have that kind of uh, snowy times. No tenemos un, una chimenea o cosas así porque obviamente no tenemos unos inviernos tan fríos como en otros lados. Then, all other sources of heat. In this case, it's natural heat. The furniture is often soft and comfortable, and there are often many personal items such as photos or books. So it says that this cozy house has this kind of furniture. Tiene estos muebles que son suaves, ¿verdad? Están recubiertos con cosas suaves. Y que tiene eh, cosas personales como fotografías y libros. So that kind of description, it's the one that we are going to do right now. I will send to you the photos in this uh, moment and you are going to think about the description that you want to uh, give to that house. So we are going to uh, check on WhatsApp. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Where are you? Here. So I will send you some photos. 
the of different kind of houses. Sim. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Mm -hmm. So we are going to have this pause in a moment. Okay. You are going to have the photos right now. Yes, I think you will have the photos. So you have a different kind of houses. Um, there are some beautiful houses that has a, a beautiful color, bright colors in this case. Also have some plants and all of the things. So you need to think of a description of these houses. I will give you like, let me see, five minutes, I think. Yes, five minutes to think about the description and I will ask you to give me the description of the house that you uh, choose because you are going to choose just one house. So let's think about the description.
Let's see. Who has the description already? Or you need more time? Tell me, Imelda. Yeah, well, um, I choose a cabin. This house is a beautiful, elegant, was building of wood. It's like a villa, but cozy and lovely. Oh, that's good. It has, it has a terrace and it is between a lot of vegetables. Vegetation. Vegetables. Like that? No, vegetation. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's all. Oh, good. Thank you. Good job. Let's see. Who else? Okay. Rebecca. Okay, I choose the third house. The third house is the most beautiful house in the forest because it has a minimalist. It's smaller and smaller than the other houses. That's it? Okay. That's it. Thank you. Good job. Another one? Another description, Alba. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. A mansion. It is much larger and more luxurious mm -hmm. than a house. It is furnished. It has um, marble floors. And mm -hmm. walls. That's good. Two lamps and mm -hmm. beautiful gardens. That is so. Okay, thank you. Good job. Let's see. One more description. I don't know if someone else wants to give the description of the house. Someone else? Okay, so uh, yesterday I uh, sent to you the link for the document that we were using for uh, the sessions. And I will write the three examples of how to describe a house that I was saying um, before. So. I will write the three examples of uh, the descriptions. So you can use uh, that description as examples when you um, have this kind of activities or when you are going to talk with someone to describe a house. So now it's time because it's almost uh, nine. So we are going to see each other tomorrow and you can keep, um, seeing the information on the document that you have the link in the group. So now we are going to see goodbye and I'll see you tomorrow in the next session. So have a really good night. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.